Otters. I just love them. They're such endearing creatures, playful, agile, and a real spirit of the wild. But they're also shy and elusive. So how do you find and watch wild otters? Well, come with me and I'll try and show you. You stand the best chance of seeing a wild otter somewhere on the coastline. That's for several reasons, not least of which here they tend to be active during daylight hours. I'm in Shetland, probably the best place in Europe to see an otter, but even here there are about a thousand miles of coastline. So where do you start? The single most important factor to bear in mind when looking for otters is the wind direction. I can't stress too strongly just how important it is to always move into the wind. Keep the breeze blowing your scent away from the water and your direction of travel. An otter's sense of smell is incredibly acute. One whiff of you and they're gone. Ghosts. So, choose a stretch of coastline depending on the wind direction on the day and then start searching. So what am I looking for? Well, fortunately for us, otters mark their territories with little smelly calling cards. Basically, little specks of poo. It's known as spraint. There's one here and another very fresh one right here. It doesn't look like your average dropping. Uh, nothing like a, a dog dropping. Little squirts of faecal matter, but a close look will reveal the contents include fish bones, sometimes scales. Here on the coast you find lots of crab shell. But perhaps the most distinctive feature of all is the scent. Now I can't unfortunately demonstrate that through the screen, but I can try to describe it. And it's not at all unpleasant. You're going to have to trust me. <laughs> Maybe I'm kinky, but I quite like the smell of otter spraint. It's really quite sweet. It reminds me of fresh cut hay. Some people describe it as violets. Definitely a lot of musk in there. And uh, of course, a hint of fish and here the seaside. Otters sprint repeatedly on the same patch of ground and over the weeks, the months, the years, you can see the profound effect on the vegetation. This lush green growth of grass, quite distinct from the vegetation all around as a consequence of being fertilised repeatedly by the otters. Once you get your eye in, this sort of feature stands out from an enormous distance. Otters leave spraint in traditional spots around their territory the whole time. Whole families spraint together and if you find several fresh deposits in the same spot it's a sure sign that you're in the territory of a mum with her cubs. <laughs> Look at this! This is brilliant! Otters on the coast tend to eat a lot of crabs and this is a, a midden, a great collection of crab shells that otters have fed on. How do I know that it's an otter that's done the damage? Well, most of these carapaces are pretty much intact. If there is damage it's along the, the back edge where the otter has grabbed it and pulled it off to get to the flesh inside. But here and there, there that's a great one, there are clear puncture marks from the otter's canine teeth. It's pierced the shell and ripped it off the back. Otters spend a good deal of their time on land and where they come ashore, if they cross soft mud or sand, they leave distinctive footprints. You may be lucky enough to find these between the low and high tide water marks and that's a sure sign that an otter has passed by recently. The tracks are really quite distinctive. Five well-spaced toes splayed out in a sort of rosette shape. 
The webs between the toes rarely show in the prints, but sometimes, especially on soft mud, claw marks can be really clear. And where the footprints climb up muddy banks, they often lead to another distinctive sign, the Otter Highway. Otters are real creatures of habit and they create well-worn paths or highways from the sea, from the coast, coming inland. Now they come on shore for a number of reasons. One of them is to reach fresh water. They need to do this every day for a drink and also to wash the salt from the coats that builds up whilst they've been hunting in the sea. And these freshwater bathing pools are often marked with a sprint point, like that. An otter highway may lead to an area like this. This is an otter halt. It's where they come to sleep and to rest after they've fed well. Here in Shetland, they often use disused rabbit warrens. They just mold them a bit to, to suit their requirements. Anywhere really that's warm and dry, it can be big gaps between boulders will do the job. So how do I know this is used regularly by otters? Well, it's absolutely covered with spraint outside and the whole area smells of them. Ah. Come and see this. Come and see. <laughs> Look at that. That's amazing. There's a sprint point right here. It's covered in sprint. The grass is really long and lush, but here, it looks like an otter has pulled a lump of seaweed into that hole. They often use seaweed, sometimes grass, uh, as bedding inside their holt. And it looks like this is quite fresh. It's a really good sign. A lot of otter tracks and sign are likely to be found along the coastline, but it is worth remembering that the whole time you walk close to the shore, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb to an otter that's down on the water. To stand the best chance of seeing an otter, you're going to have to get your silhouette away from the skyline. So you know otters are in the area, but how are you going to see them? Well, the first stage is to get to high ground. You want to try and find a spot which gives you a commanding view over the otter territory, preferably taking in many of the places where you've already found signs, sprinting points and halts. And the best time to sit and wait is towards low tide. Otters that hunt in coastal waters tend to do so around the low water mark. And that's for lots of reasons, but not least of which is they have less water to dive through to reach the seabed at low tide and it's around the seabed that they find most of their food. Fish like butterfish, lumpsucker and flatfish. A windless day with calm water makes spotting the low profile of a swimming otter much easier than trying to spot them on choppy waves. But there are other creatures out there that can add to the confusion. At a distance, birds like shags, cormorants, eider ducks and maybe mergansers can all produce a wake and ripples just like a swimming otter. It can be especially confusing if you just catch a glimpse of one diving. Sooner or later though, a bird will lift its head up high and give itself away. No, that's a seal. <laughs> they, they can be really confusing too. They make your heart race when you first spot them because they can look just like an otter at first glance. But there are subtle differences. Both common and grey seals, when they come to the surface, they usually only float there with their head showing, maybe their head and their back. Whereas an otter shows head, back and tail. Very low profile, but quite distinct. 
Also, seals do a lot of what's known as bottling, just hanging in the water, pointing their nose up to the sky. Otters don't do that. They never do that. If an otter's got its nose up, it's because it's feeding on something. There's a lot more movement. Also, when a seal dives, it tends to do so with a gentle disappearing act below the surface. They don't jump dive like an otter. You know what gets otters to come out when you're sitting and waiting for them? A cup of coffee. Not for them, for me. You can guarantee you get the flask out, you start to sip a coffee, pop, out they come. What's the theory anyway? Not working. I mean, the coffee's good, but um, no sign of an otter yet. Just wait. They're here. They're definitely here. Oh. Here we go. Yes. Got an otter. Right, the temptation now is to charge off down to the beach and try and get close to it, but not yet, not yet. A few things we've got to establish. First of all, I want to describe to you what it is I spotted that caught my eye, what made it distinctly an otter. As they surface when they're hunting, they pop to the surface like a cork, and that popping action can be really eye-catching. That's why I often prefer to scan with the naked eye rather than with binoculars the whole time. And then to confirm my sighting. There he is. Huh. With the binoculars. Now, before I go down, try and get close to this animal, I'm going to watch which direction it's swimming in. Okay, it's coming in through the bay towards me. Most important of all, once again, check the wind direction. Can I get down to the shoreline without my scent passing in the direction of the otter? Yep, it's looking good at the moment. Blowing in here. Otter coming this way. And even then, there's one more thing to check. I've got to look at the coastline and try and second guess where the otter is likely to come. Pointless trying to get to where it already is, It'll be past me by the time I reach the shore. Instead, watch the direction of travel. Watch which way that otter is swimming. And now look at the coast. There's a really good headland, a little promontory sticking out, downwind, further down the shore. There's lots of good cover there too. I'm going to aim for that. And now we start to play grandmother's footsteps. The moment the otter dives, you can move without being spotted. But be careful, dives only last about 30 or 40 seconds, less if the otter finds a fish. You have to make sure you are perfectly still and well hidden well before it surfaces again. There it is. Wait. Wait. There, it's under the surface and I can move again. I'm trying to get to a point on the shore where my outline is hidden by rocks or a steep bank. Now this is perfect. If I've judged everything right, then I'll be in position before the otter reaches me and hopefully I'll get a first class view without the otter knowing I'm there. <sighs> Four together. It's a mum. Four cubs, I think. <laughs> Still a long way off. Otter cubs stick with their mum for 12 months, sometimes more. 
and you can see by watching this grooming session just how close the bond is between family members. I'll tell you what, I will never ever tire of watching otters and it's moments like this that make it all worthwhile. And if you'd like to see more of otters, click on the button down on the bottom right and do remember to subscribe so that we can let you know about new films coming onto the channel. I'll see you soon.